Hey guys, Matt here from Henry Shine, just doing a uh, quick video, maybe one, maybe two, depending on how fast we can get through this. Um, taking you through denture designing through the, the lab software, and then uh, going from there onto, obviously, um, the 3D printing, the next Dent 3D Sprint software, so we'll get that started. Um, so we'll jump into our three-shape dental system. As you can see, that's what that one is. So we're gonna double left click. Oh, it's already running, that will be the way. And then when it opens up, it opens up and looks something like this. So we've got two parts of dental system. We've got an inbox. This is where if dentists are sending us cases, we can go right click and accept a case for a crown or, or for a, uh, obviously a denture or whatnot. Um, once that case has been accepted, it's gonna come into our orders. So this is where all of our orders are. So today, last two days, last week, two weeks created, designed, so this gives you an idea of um, uh, where everything goes into. So I'm just gonna leave it on today. Now, inbox, if someone sends you a scan, if you're wanting to create a new order yourself, if someone sent you a, a, a set of impressions for you to pour up or scan, so we're just gonna go straight into the order form here. So I'm gonna go right click and hit new, or likewise, you can come up here and left click on the new tab there. So right click, new, same, same. So once it's come into here, you can put in some patient information. So let's just call this last name, cell, first name, Matthew, oh my God. And then uh, order number, Matt, uh, without a space, let's just put a underscore in here and then say denture test. So we know which one, uh, when it saves, it's gonna be saved as Matt underscore denture test. All right, now, with our teeth. If we're going to be doing a um, printed base, but with Vita teeth, I always start with our gingiva. Now, how I do this is, let's just, uh, okay, so I'm gonna left click on this tooth, hold shift down, and left click to there. And come up here, left click, hold shift down, holding shift down until I click over there with the left click again. And now that's basically all highlighted. Gonna come into here gingiva first, so I always do my gingiva. You'll notice that it throws the gingiva around and it's let us know I've chosen the gingiva. So we got copy dentures here. You're not really gonna be doing these two in um, Denture World, but we're gonna be doing this one. So I'm gonna choose, once we've chosen this one, if we're just doing a brand new uh, pair of dentures, I'm gonna come over here and hover over the plus, and then I'm going to choose Vita, uh, oh, I've saved it as favorite, so it's up here. Vita Vionic Base, and it doesn't matter about the color. Type, I'm gonna go, now I know uh, this sounds a bit funny, the fact that we're um, doing this, but I'm gonna go base with artificial teeth, milled reduction, and I'm going to leave uh, changes, sorry, from next Dent Manufacturing to printed Vita Denture Base. So now that way, I know we're not milling it. It knows that we're printing here, um, but this is just a preset that the computer has. Uh, so we're gonna choose the Vita Base. We're actually gonna be printing this in the next Dent printer, but Vita have got a workflow where we need to choose a Vita Base. And then we come up to our teeth up here, and we're gonna go left click, and you can see how it's now chosen artificial tooth type. That's for doing dentures. And now this is highlighted for our artificial teeth. And I'm going to choose now Vita, which should be up the top because I've saved it as favorite. Vita Vionic artificial teeth. So next dent, I'm gonna make it printed Vita Denture Base so it knows. And manufacturer, never mind that, that's all done in the background. And we're gonna choose A2 shade. So now we've chosen Vita teeth Vita base workflow, but obviously we're gonna be printing the base in the next dent printer, and we're gonna be using the carded tooth. So another thing that we can do up here, if you can see up the top right here, uh, we can choose the, in between a digital impression, if someone were to send you a scan, an impression, if you need to scan an impression, or a model, if we're gonna scan a model. Now, I don't have a scanner, I'm just gonna shrink this down. I don't have a scanner, so, um, I do have a scanner, but not a lab scanner. So I can't hit scan. That's gonna take us straight into our lab scanner. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then it's gonna take us into this page now. So 
you can see this is a new case just here that's just been created at 8.30 tonight. So I'm going to right click on this. Now if I uh, come down here, I'm going to import in my scan. If I wanted to just scan and use my lab scanner, I'd choose scan. But because I'm importing in a, a, a scan, I'm going to come into here. Now this is where I've had these saved, so I'm just going to choose upper. You'll notice at the top, it will then say lower. So I'm going to choose my lower file. And then up the top, it's going to say import in your, your wax rim. So I'm just going to choose wax rim. So now that it's designed, it's brought in our, our models that we've had scanned. And you can see the little three shape scanner saying it's scanned. So you can go right click now and design. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go through and do our case. So once we've gone through and we've come into here, um, it's got, it asks us for occlusal plane. I generally, we're not touching these, we're just touching this one here. So three points, occlusal plane, one, two, three. Once that's done, I remove by left clicking and dragging that. We're gonna now set up just where we want our arch to be. So we're gonna line it up with the midline roughly. You know, this is where we want our teeth to be. Cool, done, perfect. Occlusal plane looks pretty good. You can remove the wax rim if you needed to, bring the lower rim, so it's looking all pretty good. Cool, done. Characteristic points, as it asks us here, tuberosity for the maxillary. So it doesn't matter if you go right first or left first. And if we click down on here, it takes away the color. So you can see when it's in like a monochromatic view, sometimes it can be a bit easier. So, um, so we click there, now it tells us incisal papilla of the tuberosity, and now it's gonna tell you canine point one, canine point two. So that's our upper done. Now we're going on to the lower, and retromolar pad, and then it tells us buccal, lingual, central ridge is the next one we're gonna do. So we're just there. Now we're gonna do over this side. Central, buccal, lingual, of the retromolar pad, and then we'll come in here and we're gonna choose uh, our canines there and there. Looks pretty good. Stoked. Let's do it next. Now, uh, boundary, to, to start drawing our boundary where we want our denture to go to, we left click over here. And we start drawing around. So depending on how much of the sulcus you want to grab, is going to depend on how far out. So if I want to grab more of this sulcus, I'm going to be, you know, clicking out here. If I don't want to grab the sulcus, then I'm, I'm going to be clicking in here. So this is going to make, I guess, our denture a little bit shorter um, where it's going into, if that makes any sense. Like it's not going to go all the way down and capture all the sulcus. It's going to finish the denture at this point, whereas this one's going to finish, finish the denture over there. Just so you know the difference between the two. Now with your points of where you're clicking, if you scan in an impression, it gives you the option to do a, um, uh, a food line. If you've got an intraoral scan, it gives you the option to, to put in a food line. Um, if you've got a model, do your food line before you scan it in. So you can either, now we can play around and move each one of these dots. You can right click and add a point in if you wanted to add a point in. You can right click and fast edit spline. So if you wanted to, let's say, draw it manually, you can manually draw it as well rather than just using point to point. Now that we're happy with that, we're gonna go lower jaw. Um, I'm gonna click over here to start drawing our margin. Oh no, let's start again. Try not to double click on your first, first time. Single click. Now if my line goes around in a loop like that. You can see that loop. If you imagine, I'll, I'll continue doing this and let's see if we can crash a program. I don't want to crash a program, obviously, but I'm teaching you a lesson. So now this is a really basic, um, obviously, model. 
it's like a pretty um, simple but you can see what's gonna happen there is when I go next it's most probably gonna get stuck at this point because what happens is the software reads around this line to figure out where the, the edge is and what will happen is it will get here and then it will go and it will just get caught in a loop so usually when it gets caught in a loop you find that your software will uh, get stuck at let's call it 70% or something like that so let's just go to let's remove point uh, remove point right click remove point and remove point let's just remove point so that now has gotten rid of that loop so it's not going to crash but if you've got a really um, really bad model when you've scanned it in and it creates like a little bit of a hole in your model then obviously those little holes that can pop up in your model can be what can crash your software because you may not necessarily be able to see it it can be hard to see but it creates like a bit of a loop in the software is blocking out so if we want to we can set our path of insertion so this is a predetermined path of insertion I want to set it from view I'll change my path of insertion to that so you can see I've pretty much eliminated any undercuts in there um, you can also have a block out angle to allow for any of that or I'm just gonna hit none so so I don't want to block anything out but you can have a preset blocking out or likewise you can use a wax knife then to paint over your rugae if the patient had pretty severe um, you know rugae and you wanted to smooth them all off so you can hit undo which is down here to take everything away next wax trimming once again blocking out on the lower so uh, I'm just going to change my path of insertion to that set from view so that's good so no undercuts there you beauty and none are blocked out but you have the option to block out with up to a certain degree as well but that's fine we're going to go next no wax trimming next so smile composer now that it comes into here now we're going to choose our Vita teeth um, with the Vita teeth, uh, you've got the options. I'm going to untick this one just here. Use single posterior library because that basically means that whatever's here is going to be duplicated over here. So if I untick this, so it's not just using the single all the same library. It means that I can pick one side. So this is going to be this uh, first and fourth quadrant. I can choose to have that in a lingual setup or buckle or crossbite and I can set up the other side a different way you know so essentially um, that's that uh, we can choose different sizes of teeth um, and then obviously different set setups and likewise you can check uh, check between triangular rectangular ovoid so these are all the different sets that are in there and then these are your sizes as well so once you're happy with uh, the teeth that you wanted to put in there you can hit apply and it will pop the teeth into position roughly off um, all the information that we've given it. So it's tried to obviously uh, put the teeth into position there. Now, uh, first thing that you want to do is obviously we want to look at our ridges, make sure we got our ridges correct. So you can check um, how we're looking on our planes. So these tools here are our movement tools for the teeth so depending on what tool we're wanting to do so I'd always start off here and then kind of make my way along if you wanted to move that forward you can you can do uh, that you can pull it from side to side that's going to obviously by doing that we're going to affect our midline position um, so don't do that if you if you don't have to um, so from there uh, let's just eliminate that now so now we can see I left click we'll move that away we're going to now um, see where we're lying on those ridges I'm gonna use this tool and now I'm gonna start to move our ridges out over the over the uh, lower there make sure we're happy with that you can now uh, depending on what way you want it to go you can start to move some of these teeth around and it will start to move if you move teeth forward it will start to move you know everything else to kind of uh, catch up so let's say if you wanted to move that more into occlusion you can do that and then to move these we can go uh, into our single movement teeth 
So now I'm going to go right click, bring to mesial contact, right click, bring to mesial, right click, bring to mesial. So it's kind of like how you would set up a denture unit. Usually you'd be starting from uh, central and then you start to make your way back. So it's pretty similar. Now, once we've moved our teeth into position and I'm happy with uh, those positionings, you know, you can see over the midline now, I'm most probably not quite right. So let's just bring that forward. So we're over the middle of the lower arch. Uh, maybe a little bit further back. There we go, looking pretty good. Happy days. Bring in the upper so you can see where we are compared to the upper. That's looking pretty good. I might decide that I want to bring it down a little bit. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so from here, if you wanted to do anything else, there's um, this button over here. So this is gonna let us know if we've got any teeth hitting. So if that's your slide button here. So we're going to slide the, the little arrow. So if something's blue like this, it's hitting somewhere. So I right click and I bring a contact with the antagonist. That fixes that one. Good news. And then that's fixed the other ones there. So this one here, I'm going to go right click, bring contact to antagonist. And I'll just move it up enough. And now we're all good. So we've got good contacts across the whole board. So now we know that we can continue on with our denture. So I'm gonna go next. Never mind about that, that's just a cammed output for our try-in. Um, all right, so next thing um, is how we want our gingerbread to look. So we've got three main settings. If you want it to look really highly uh, detailed, we can go there. I'm just gonna choose the middle one, natural. I'm gonna hit next. Now, from uh, after this is done and it creates our gingiva, uh, we'll then do the mandibular. Uh, and then after that, we can play around and um, you know change our settings. So I like the base thickness to be 2.5 and relief um, 0.1. You can play around with different settings on there as well to what you prefer. That's most really a good starting point. Next. <clears throat> now, um, once this uh, lower one's all done and made, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the next step and build up a little bit of the gingiva. Usually myself, I like to build it up a little bit behind the anteriors, just to make it a little bit thicker in behind there. So you can see um, I like to use the wax knife. You can use this tool first and bring it up a little bit if you wanted to. Something like that, that's pretty good. But if you wanted to use your wax knife, you can use a wax knife and build up certain areas, smooth them off. So you can do all of that within the software. If you wanted to add any more material in to create a little bit, let's say, um, you know, you can do something like that and soften it off. So you've got more of a canine uh, kind of um, look through there. Perfect. Oh, sorry, too much. So that's just I'd like to give you an idea of the kind of things that you can do really quickly. Next, pre-manufacturing. Uh, glue space, drill radius. I'm going to uh, move that down. I don't want any drill compensation. Um, that's one thing I don't want to do because I don't want it to over mill or overtake out too much material. So I'm going to hit preview. And when I hit preview, what you'll notice is there will be little gaps in between. It'll create little gaps between the teeth and the gingiva. So that's now socketing out essentially the, the, the base for us, if that makes any sense. So this glue space is allowing you know enough room in between the teeth and the denture base for us to put in some of the uh, Vigo Bionic bonding agent. And any minute now, there we go. So it's a bit hard to see because it's put the noise on, but let's say, let's move the teeth away. So you can see how it started to socket out um, 
in around behind there so that socket out for the teeth to fit into nicely. Alright, so now that that's done, I'm going to go next. We're going to do uh, the lower. You can see it hasn't socketed out as well yet. I'll bring the teeth back in. I'm going to go next. Uh, let's actually sculpt denture base and just uh, let's use this and pull this up just a little bit. Oh, too much. Wax knife. Uh, and let's just take a little bit away from some of these. Something like that. Perfect, guys. Absolutely perfect. Next. Um, I don't want drill compensation. Let's bring that down a little bit. So this is going to be how tight your teeth are to push in there and how much glue is going to be allowed to get into there as well. So now that that's done, we're looking pretty good. Our dentures are finished up or lower. And we'll then um, fit in our beta uh, teeth from there. So now I didn't create a... A key on this one but I'll show you after this produces um, how we can add in a key if we want to add in a template um, okay so there there we go so I haven't added in the template you can print out a separate template that you can put on so that you know that all the teeth are in the right position so now that that's finished designing so you can see how it's given us a gingiva uh, artificial tooth gingiva artificial tooth so I'm gonna hit close now that's our full upper, full lower denture done. Um, we're going to right click on this case and I'm going to hit advanced and generate cam output. And right click, advanced and explore cam. So now um, you can see when I've uh, looked at this mono block, this is our try in and these are our denture bases. Now, as I said, in control panel, which is a different part of the software, which is up in here, you can create a little template as well that you can print out at the same time. You print out your denture bases, so you've got a key uh, for the teeth to fit on. Um, so once we have, um, you know, gone advanced explore cam, let's just print our uh, two denture bases. So that's that and that. I'm going to minimize the three shape software. And now what I'm going to do is uh, I've got my 3D Sprint open up here. So I'm going to grab both of those files, left click, drag it in, and let it go. So that's brought in both of our dentures. Oh, sorry. Wrong part. Sorry. Prepare. So I want to be in prepare. Now drag them both in into here. So both of our dentures are in the prepare part. So you can see one's highlighted. Um, why is it not? screen come on boy you can do it so we got this one and this one so I'm gonna highlight the top one first so you can see that's the upper that I've got highlighted I'm gonna hit fix and see if there's any issues there's a couple of intersections so I'll just hit fix done so that's all sorted now I'm gonna highlight my lower and you can see there's a little a uh, couple of little issues on there so I'm just gonna hit fix as well on the lower so that's all sorted. So now that they're both fixed, ready to go, what I'm going to do is hit control, highlight both, so they're both highlighted. And I'm gonna uh, close out of the fix part. And now that they're both highlighted, I'm gonna add to print. So once they're added into the printer, you can, um, you can see that they're red right now and we got little warning signs. So that means that they're not in the printer bed. So if you wanna move your printer bed around, right click on your mouse first and then hold down left click together and then that's how you move them around likewise in the three shape to do that it's a little bit different and i'll have to show you that but anyhow um transform first so you can see how move scale hold alt to move z direction hold shift to disable snapping so there's some fast uh tools and it gives you some tips on on here but let's say, let's just move them uh, both there because both are highlighted. 
I'm going to just highlight one now, hit transform, move one to that side, move this to that side. So I want to spin this one around. Oop. If it's not going to fit in the width of the whole thing, which it looks like it's not, let's try printing it that way. And depending on what way you're uh, oh, looking at this, let's go this one up. Oh, they're both highlighted. Come on, Matt. That's good. Now that one. Let's spin that one around. Cool. So that's good. Oh, why? Is my computer playing up? All good, so let's go back into transform. We're gonna go move. So these now become our icons as to how we're gonna move this around. So I'm gonna print it on that angle. And this one, I wanna print on that angle. So let's move that there. Move that one there. So they're both in the build plate, roughly in the middle. Now, once they're good to go, if you've got the template that you wanted to print as well, you could print that on this particular um, print as well. So I'm just going to now come in here. Obviously, my printer is going to be chosen, which is this top one. I want to make sure that, so that was up here that I clicked, printer. I want to make sure my printer is chosen. I want to make sure that I've chosen the right material. So denture, the right color, opaque pink. Micron, we don't have a choice, and build style, we don't have a choice, so we hit set. It's gonna crash on me because I'm most probably not connected to that printer. No, it's okay, all good. So now, what we do is we come up and we're gonna add in some um, bars. So I'm gonna hit this create bars. Now, once we hit create bar, I wanna have one bar from there to there. I'm gonna hit apply. I want another bar from there to there and I want another bar from there up to that one which runs through the middle so that gives us plenty of support there that's good news now I'm gonna hit apply now I want to add some bars into here so one there one there apply one there one there apply one there to there now if I want to move that I might just move that down grab and drag it apply one here to there, apply, and one here to there, apply. So that's that side for the palette. And then I always advise if you can, depending on everything, oh, that's most probably a little bit too much. Let's just put it there. Um, cool. Let's bring that that way, and then maybe that can go there. All right, so that's a little bit of support there. Hit apply. And one final one, I like to go across here. One, two, and one, two. Just to give us that a little bit of extra support across there because what happens is printing, this is gonna print out near enough perfect, right? But when we're curing it and the, the material's getting really hot inside the light box to cure 100% of the way through, we just wanna make sure that we've got enough supports on there that it's not gonna warp in the, um, you know, in the curing box. Cool, so that's done. Now we're just gonna go to Smart Support. Do you wanna combine both parts? I'm gonna hit no. You can hit yes if you wanted to. There we go. So now that's printed all the supports on there um, and it's good to go. So very minimal supports you can see in the Nextent printer and that is a really good part about the Nextent printer obviously. Now that that's good to go, um, we can add our print job into the queue. Unable to connect a printer, that's no surprise because I don't have a printer hooked up because I'm at my house. So that's it and that's how we then obviously take that into the printer. Um, you can come up here and hit estimate. So that's gonna let us know that that's basically um, gonna be around about an hour to print, more or less. So one hour on the dot, give or take, obviously, depend depending on how it's going as it's printing. So cool, so that's that, done. It lets you know how many mils that you've used. So that's a 3D printer software. Likewise, if you wanted to print the monoblocks and the try-ins, obviously you can um, 
bring them into the 3D printer and print them as well. Now, I know that looks a lot bad, a lot worse there, but when you print that out in the tooth resin and you give that a polish, you're not really gonna notice that at all. All right, cool. So that's done, close out of that. And uh, the next thing, just to show you in the control panel, I'm pretty sure the um, uh, design settings, uh, where are we? Density, free design, no, I don't need that. Gingerbread, um, and Extents, 3D teeth. Uh, okay, when we choose this base with artificial teeth, I'm just gonna go positioning guide, tick that, and then I'm just gonna go 3D plus. So it's the same material as um, when, uh, when you'll be printing your denture. So that's all good now. So that's basically good to go. Happy days. Um, so that's our control panel. I'll just close that. Um, that's my video, 31 minutes. Uh, we could have two, a pair of dentures printing off right now, all designed, try in. Um, that's it, thanks guys, enjoy your video. I'll uh, turn this into a YouTube link and I'll email you guys a YouTube link so you can kinda see some things about the software. Cool guys, catch ya, bye.